Let's go to Evelyn in Massachusetts now. Evelyn, oh, thanks, I think you Kathy. just unmute. Hi, you're uh, on. Catherine, I really liked your book. Um, Thank you. Uh, I chair the Massachusetts Coalition of Independent Voters here, and um, we're on the phones talking to voters, very excited about the uh, question to rank choice voting. Yes on two. Yes on two. <laughs> and I, I know it's not your full model, but um, if we win, uh, what do you think the impact will be um, on Massachusetts and, and actually for the, for the nation? Yeah, so Evelyn, let me expand that a bit for everybody else on the call. So what Evelyn is talking about is uh, that there is a ballot initiative that Massachusetts voters will vote on on November 3rd, just like I referred to Alaska is going to vote on final four voting. And by the way, it's measure two. So yes, on two in Alaska. And then Massachusetts is going to vote on rank choice voting on measure two. So that's yes, on two in Massachusetts. And what Massachusetts is voting on is half of what I recommend as the optimal solution. So they're doing the ranked choice voting. They're not yet getting rid of party controlled primaries. And I, but I mean, it's fabulous. I'm deeply, I'm actually on the board of the Massachusetts effort. So I'm deeply involved there a zillion times uh, supportive. And you have a fabulous campaign manager there, Karen McCormick. So I think that similarly, as I said to Alaska, the case in Massachusetts is that these states that are making the effort to engage citizens across the state to first of all, get the signatures to get it on the ballot. And then for the massive you know, voter education campaign that it is, which takes money, but it also just takes individual evangelism. And actually that's the best. Um, this is a harbinger for, for good things because that's precisely what it's going to take in every other state in the country to, to change the rules. So I, I said I'm watching Alaska and I'm also watching Massachusetts. These are the two things that, you know, I won't be able to switch to a channel that's going to tell me, and here's how the votes are coming in on this ballot <laughs> initiative in, you know, Massachusetts. Um, but I will be uh, texting, you know, in quite a lot of communication with the people in both of those states to really understand how that is looking. And I believe they will come in as a, as a yes. And so thank you, Evelyn, so much for everything you're doing there. Whatever I can do to support you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Evelyn. Um, of course, the other state that a lot of us have our eye on is Florida, where nonpartisan top two primaries is on the ballot there. And they're involved in a very, very intense fight um, so there's there's lots of reforms to look at and where we land. Um, yeah, but like, I think I mean, you're right about there being. Go ahead, Catherine. Well, mea culpa to me for not mentioning Florida then as well, you know, because um, that's like another piece of this puzzle. And what I will hope is that, you know, Florida comes back later and uh, moves for ranked choice voting in addition to their open primaries. And I'll hope that Massachusetts comes back later and adds in an open uh, top five primaries element. And you can re-engage the same people who really want to say, you know, let's reform this system top to bottom. That's great. I think that's important because I think part of what we have to do as a movement is we're building a new set of muscles from the bottom up. Yeah. And so if you can develop those muscles to win a reform, and, and of course, for Massachusetts and Alaska, they, they had to go, and Florida, I think Florida was done, but in Massachusetts and Alaska, they had to go through petitioning in the midst of COVID. And, and so they built some strong muscles there. 